There are 80 million people who are displaced around the world today. That's nearly 1% of the world's population. 50% of those who are displaced live in non-camp areas, and this can include informal settlements or urban areas. As a result of COVID-19 and climate-related issues, we have seen a 40% rise in the number of people who need humanitarian assistance. This is the single largest increase recorded in one year. So I've worked on urban refugees for close to two decades. And one of the things that I know and many other scholars know is that people who are displaced into urban areas face very high vulnerabilities anyway. And this is because they don't have the social networks they need to rely on in order to access livelihoods, shelter, other necessities. Also because in many places they are not allowed to live in urban areas, they have restrictions. This has to do with their legal status as well. What COVID-19 has done is exacerbated many of the issues that people face in urban areas, especially if they're displaced. So for example, in many countries, those who are displaced into urban areas are employed in the informal sector. The informal sector has been very significantly hit because of COVID-19. In many countries, in order to stop the transmission of the virus, governments have enacted lockdowns. They have cracked down on the informal sector. They have stopped certain informal businesses from operating. Now, this affects the urban poor in many countries already. But even amongst them, for those who are displaced into these urban areas, whether they're asylum seekers or whether they're refugees, are even more adversely affected and maybe facing high levels of not just unemployment, but also lack of support either by their home governments or by humanitarian organizations. Humanitarian aid has always been fickle. It moves from one crisis to the next. What we've seen in this last year is that because donor countries are grappling with the fallouts of COVID-19 on their own economies and societies, that aid is also being cut for humanitarian support. And this has knock-on effects for the kinds of support that aid agencies can provide. So given this background, it becomes obvious that COVID-19 has had significant impacts on those who are displaced in urban areas. To quote Care International, it's just made a bad situation even worse. Those who already faced vulnerability are even more vulnerable today. They've lost jobs because of lockdowns and restrictions, and it has made them face higher amounts of poverty. So although there has been coverage on the effects of COVID-19 on humanitarian crises, so for example, we've seen stories coming out from the Greek islands, the overcrowding in places like Moria. What we haven't seen very much of is the coverage on displaced people outside of camps and in urban areas. Again, this is surprising given that the majority of people do not live in camps, but live outside of them. So I'm gonna talk about livelihoods in particular and what the effects of that are on other aspects of well-being. So for example, we see in countries such as Thailand that 82% of asylum seekers and refugees have lost their jobs due to COVID-19. And as a result of that, they have less access to income. Now, this is not specific to Thailand. It's been something that's been recorded in a number of different places. But the effects of that are quite significant because what people are doing in order to cope when they have less income is that they are cutting back on basic necessities such as food. They skip rent payments. The cash assistance that's being provided in some places such as Thailand is not adequate. This kind of Food vulnerability that we see is, again, common in many places. We've seen this in the context of Lebanon as well, which has hosted a significant number of Syrian refugees for a long time. Syrians have predominantly been working in the construction industry, in the informal sector, in agriculture. And due to COVID-19, many of them have lost jobs. So 61% of Syrian women have lost their jobs. 
and have had to cope in quite significant ways as well. Here, one of the things that the World Food Program has noted is that 75% of people have responded by saying that they do not have enough to eat. So their negative coping mechanisms include skipping meals or going a whole day without eating. So the Ugandan case is quite interesting. Urban refugees are often not registered because they're not supposed to be living in urban areas. They're often registered in the camps. And as a result, they are invisible in urban environments. What has happened as a result of COVID-19 is not only have they lost their jobs, but also they are unable to access food rations. This is because they collect their rations from the camps where they are registered. And because of the lockdowns by the government, they cannot actually travel to their camps to collect these food rations. And because they are not registered in the urban areas and they're not counted for in the census, they also are not eligible for national aid. UNHCR and many other humanitarian organizations are not providing adequate support for urban refugees in Uganda. And as a result, what you have are people who are falling through the cracks. So neither are they being able to access the aid that they would get in the camps, nor are they being supported adequately in urban areas. And this is compounded by the fact that they've lost their jobs. Uganda has not just had lockdown measures, but they've also cracked down on the informal sector. So there are many businesses that have been closed. Specific food vending businesses have been allowed to operate, but this has then affected the food prices and the availability of food. So again, it's led to significant food insecurity, not just for the urban poor, but again for displaced populations in Uganda. The COVID-19 situation has obviously made things much worse for those who are displaced into urban areas. My suggestions are a few. The first is that we must lift restrictions and sanctions on those who are displaced into urban areas. We must allow them to feel safe about living in urban areas so that they can access healthcare and employment opportunities. The second thing that I would suggest is that we need to include them in the national census. We need to make sure that they are registered in urban areas. So again, they are counted and they are included in any kind of plans to support people who are facing deprivation in different areas rather than leaving them out. The third thing that I would suggest is that we need to include community groups in addressing COVID-19 issues. So we need to think about how they can work together with displaced populations in order to support the efforts by governments to curb the spread of the virus. And finally, and most importantly, I think, we need to seriously consider and bring in refugee groups and refugees themselves into COVID-19 responses. So if COVID-19 has taught us anything, it's that the virus doesn't recognize borders and it doesn't recognize difference. So if we are going to move towards a more socially just place where we, we want dignity and respect for different populations of people, we want to support them, we need to appreciate the fact that humanitarian crises don't just occur in particular geographies, but across, occur all across the world in different places. And we need to ensure that support is given to different groups of people across different spaces in equitable ways.